I was just wondering how much of an effect do you think behaviorism has had on the continued question of the existence of language? The continued question about uh, whether or not language exists. Oh, and yeah, I understand. That had an overwhelming impact. Yes. The behaviorism can't die. It doesn't matter how often it's refuted <laughs> and how fully it's refuted. It comes right back to life. It's kind of like genetic somehow. Actually, I was taught just in Toronto. I was in Toronto a couple of days ago. I was talking to a, a very uh, outstanding uh, neuroscient, ling neurolinguist who works on these, done a lot of the work on these topics. And she was telling me, not, not as a joke, about what happens in her introductory courses. She, says that she teaches language acquisition. Uh, in her introductory language acquisition courses, the first day, she asks kids to say, how is language acquired? She's about 100% say uh, reinforcement and association. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, it's been refuted so overwhelmingly that uh, you don't know what to say about it, but you're absolutely right. It keeps coming back and it's at the core of these uh, computational cognitive science approaches. They don't call it behaviorism anymore, but it's, it's sort of the same idea. Actually, behaviorism in any serious sense collapsed in the early 60s just for internal reasons. I mean, the, you know, it, uh, some, there were interesting things that happened that essentially wiped it out. So, for example, one, are, are you a psychologist? <laughs> you, know, you know this stuff. Well, if those of you are psychologists ought to know that uh, a lot of the stuff's been forgotten, you know, because people forget everything that, didn't, that isn't on the internet. But uh, it's uh, back around early 60s, there was a very interesting paper in Psych Review, you know, the main psychological journal by Keller and Nancy Breland. They're uh, Skinner's two main students, you know, the most loyal orthodox students. Uh, they assumed, like everybody, that the game's all over. There's no point studying anything anymore. Everything's answered. So they went off into animal training. And in fact, they're the ones who trained all the famous animals, like, you know, Flipper, the dolphin, and all the things that my kids watched. I don't know what you watch, but, you know, uh, they, uh, and they discovered something. They discovered that when they were training an animal, they got the expected results up to a certain point, and then the results started to deteriorate. So, for example, if they, I remember one case, they were training a pig to, uh, pick up a coin and put it in a mail slot and, you know, get a whatever pigs like, uh, you know, re reinforced by some food. And according to the story, the pig is supposed to uh, improve its behavior, you know, don't do any other things, just go more and more right to the coin, put it right in, don't waste any time, you get reinforced. And that worked up to a point. But then after that point, it turned out that the pig started rooting at the coin and delaying the reinforcement and would continue to do it up to the point where it starved. Well, what was happening is what they called instinctual drift. Pigs root, you know, that's what they are. And they were interpreting this whole coin business, some crazy thing that the experimenter made up, as just some funny kind of rooting. And uh, they then, over time, went back to their rooting. Well, then they started looking at all the experiments in the lab. It turned out the experiments are always terminated when this begins to happen. So you get a smooth learning curve, and then things start to go haywire, so you stop the experiment. And uh, say the Skinner experiments were pigeons pecking. Well, it turns out there's two kinds of pecking. Uh, pigeons peck for corn, and they also peck for water. And they look kind of alike, but they're different kinds of pecking. And the things that the pigeons were able to be trained on actually were adaptations of one or the other of these kinds of pecking. You tried to get the pigeons to do something else, you get nowhere. Uh, but if you kind of modify their instinctive behavior slightly, you can sort of fool yourself into thinking you're getting results. But before too long, the animal takes over and it's doing what it was doing. So it kind of wiped out the whole field. Uh, later work in the mid-60s already began to discover that, uh, I mean, I, re I remember this happening. I was involved in it. But uh, I remember I once gave a talk at the University of Illinois or somewhere. It was a strict behaviorist department. And uh, 
you know, talk kind of like this, you know, 50 years ago, so different, but same idea, saying that uh, you can't get anywhere with uh, conditioning and reinforcement for the human behavior. So one of the guy got up, a very good behavioral animal psychologist, and said, how do you know it works for animals? So I said, I don't know, you guys say it works for animals, so I suppose you're right. And uh, his name was Bill Brewer. And he got interested and he started uh, redoing the animal experiments. And he started publishing some papers and it turned out that the animals are getting reinforced only when they're aware of what's happening. If you set up the experiment, you can do some sophisticated experiments that distinguish cases where the animal doesn't know what's going on and then it doesn't get any reinforcement and reinforcement doesn't do anything. And other cases where the animal sort of sees what's going on, it gets reinforced. So his conclusion and others too was this is just uh, information transmission. You know, so reinforcement experiments are an odd way of providing the animal with information. I mean, you can't tell them peck when you, I tell you to, so you do it this other way. Uh, and uh, there's more work that did that. But by the, uh, in more recent times, it's not even evident that conditioning exists. Um, there is work, again, Randy Gallistel and others who've argued that it's all an artifact. It's just uh, various ways of estimating valuable, uh, values of variables, and the whole thing kind of collapses. But it doesn't matter. You're, you're exactly right. No matter how much it's refuted, it's right back the next day. Mm -hmm.